We're going to start off with boreholes. We'll then be looking at water age. Then we'll go over to water trace. We'll then look at our water backup files. Cool. Let's go and have a look at the boreholes. So on this project, you can see I've got the water coming into the site over here. And we're going to put a borehole over in this location over here. If we um, select the node, you can see water node is selected and I'm in water mode. So I'm going to go over to water operations and I'll go to edit node data. You can see it's preset demand and it's currently set to zero. That's perfect. We can cancel that and we can go and place a borehole in this location. So I'm going to go to our graphical and and draw the borehole. I'll place it over here. It'll indicate the position is less than one meter from node 73. The borehole we placed on the existing node. And I will say OK. We can then press escape to end that function. And we can then select the borehole itself. Currently, your boreholes might look like this. They might also look um, uh, as a sphere, it all depends on your display settings. So if we look at your water display settings, I've got the, the show water entities as 3D switched off. So that's how why it's showing it as a 2D symbol. I can then right click water operations and edit the borehole data. With the borehole data open, I can now start populating this information here. You will need to get a hydrogeological report before you can populate this item. So from the hydro report we know that the recommended yield is 11 um, liters per second. We also know that the water at rest is 17 meters from the ground and while operating it is 35 meters and our pump intake, we're going to model it to be 38 meters below the ground. You are optional, you can give it a name as well. If we look at the equipment, we can press on the button with three dots on it. That will just bring in the information across. This information will be dependent on what's available in your area, what the suppliers or the manufacturers can supply you with. I'm going to use a diameter of 80 and I'm going to use a shaft diameter of 22 millimeters. I'm going to use a fixed delivery of 11 for now and I'm going to press OK. I'm then going to run an analysis quickly, single step, and I'm going to use average demand and press the start. We can then look at the messages. We'll see we have no errors at the stage. We can close that. We can then go back to the node. So I've selected two items here. I'll just press escape and select the node and go to water operations, edit node all data. We can then go back to the equipment and we can switch this off. We can go to select the pump and we can go based on the single step analysis. We can select the average and we can choose to have um, a submersible pump or positive displacement. We can click on the search button and we can select from a range of pumps here. Some pumps do allow for adjusting the speed. Some pumps already are at the lowest speed. So it all depends on what the pumps are allowing for. I'm going to select this pump and I will then press OK. 
we can then go and run a single step analysis again and look for messages there's no errors so this pump is working for us and that's how we would put a pump on a borehole onto our network